All right, welcome back to another edition of the Golden Sun No Save and Quit Speedrun tutorial. Uh, last time we got to go through Mercury Lighthouse, and that was a lot of fun. We got to get beat up by some monsters. We got Sadaros. We 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 defeated him at the top of the lighthouse. That was all good. Now we're in a position to go back and uh, go heal, go fight Trick actually for the first time, uh, and then continue our way through to Fushin Temple. Uh, the game is going to be a lot easier now, there's a, a lot less things that we need to worry about, and uh, it should be relatively easy for us to get there. So let's just continue on our way. Obviously we need to get off the airy, and there's not really a quick way to do that, we just have to do it. And away we go. If you're so inclined to want to do the uh, instant fall glitch, this ladder coming up is a real great candidate for that. If you get instant fall on the first try, it saves about two seconds. Uh, it is a 60, uh, frame perfect trick at 60 FPS, so you probably won't get it first try. There we go. <laughs> and so, like someone like me who's been playing this game forever, you see how, how many tries that took. So. Certainly wouldn't take that for granted, anyway. This is where we get the Hermes water. Uh, and... If you come up to this fountain and press A, you're gonna get this text box here, which is the fountain is flowing with water. We don't want that. That That is actually slow. What we wanna do is we wanna run up to this, press select to open the menu. That way we avoid that text box, which saves a few frames, and get the Hermes water. Next thing we wanna do is we need to do a menu we need to set our gin. The idea here is that we want both Mercury gin on Isaac, because later on we're going to be using a void with Isaac. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to do a tiny menu. We are going to get Flint, we're going to swap him with Sleet so that we get the two Mercury. And then I'm going to swap Flint with Forge. What I've done here is I've split up the two summons here, so I've got the, the two Ramses and two for Kirin split up across Garrett and Ivan. Uh, this allows us to use Ramses and Kirin relatively freely. It means they're going to recover. Uh, uh, one summon will cover in one gen click instead of two gen clicks, so that's uh, quite a convenient thing for us to have to do. This is extremely similar to what we had before, before we entered Mercury Lighthouse, except now we've got the gen configured a little bit differently. Stand by everything. Set Gust, that way Mia retains her ridiculous agility. And we'll throw a heal into Garrett, because Garrett was looking in pretty beat up shape. If they have other people hurt, we'll then heal them as well. At this point, there is no more routing involved with herbs or anything like that, so feel free to use these items as you see fit if you happen to have them. If you need to use a nut because, oh crap, Isaac doesn't have enough PP or it's inconvenient to heal with Mia, just do it. We don't have to worry about that anymore. So. Let us continue on our way. So, the first thing that we need to know is uh, a whole large part of no save and quit speedrunning is minimizing encounters. So, often that's just up to chance, and that if you get bad RNG or a bad encounter rate, there's not a lot you can do with it. All you can do is put yourself into a position where that if you get decent RNG, you're optimizing the scenario that you get. So to do that, it's actually slightly you are about 40% I think less likely to get no I forget the stat <laughs> but you are less likely to get two encounters on the way back to Bilbin Cave if you do an encounter reset in Emil. It costs very little time so it's worthwhile to do it so we're going to enter exit and continue on our way. That's just going to give us the best possible chance of only getting one encounter on the way back. Or at least uh, minimizing the number of encounters that we would get. Say instead of three we get two, or instead of getting two we get one. So we clear these fights as we have been doing, like there's not too much to say here. We can use Ramses and Plasma. Mia with Plasma of course is very very potent and very useful. And that guy didn't die, what a jerk. 1 HP, nice. Yay, and now Ivan has Plasma, so we can even use Plasma with Ivan, which is slightly stronger than using it with Mia. So that's one thing you should know. Um, this Jupiter power here is much higher with Ivan, and that's going to allow him to do deal more damage. Alright, this is a nasty encounter, but we, we already knew that. Uh, we can try something like this. 
to... Yeah, this will be fine. HP, man, I'm getting really unlucky. And there we go. Okay. Now that we've hit Bilbin Cave, it's actually better for us to run if the enemy if there's not too many enemies. We'll see why that is in a moment. So we'll just run through here. Should uh stand by this gym. See how we've got about 44% chance to run? Uh statistically. We have pretty good odds to have a successful flee here. Generally, I will only flee if there's one or two enemies, so that if someone, if they do decide to gang up on a person, I'm not going to be negatively, like, I'm minimizing the chances that something random happens and someone dies, right? Um, but at this point, you have pretty good odds to run. Um, see how this run EV says 2.6? That says, on average, we should expect uh, to be able to run after two flea, uh, 2.6 flee attempts. So that's pretty good odds. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a 4 enemy encounter, so I think it would be too risky to run in this instance, so I will actually take this fight even though I know that I would be able to successfully run here. So we're just going to do this. Uh, this... Fantastic. Great five, that's nice. Two oozes, I'm gonna try and run from that. Running is always faster if you can get it off, so if you can see an encounter where things aren't so dangerous, then uh, by all means try and run. Great. Okay, now we have made it into uh, this area. What we're going to do is we can set all or whatever we want to do. Cast Avoid with Isaac. We're going to use Avoid a few times, so if you want, you can hotkey this over Retreat if you like. Um, kind of personal preference on that one. So how does Avoid work? Well, Avoid works basically by comparing two things. Your party's average level and the the expected level for the area that you're in. So it, so basically we have two things. Your average uh, party level. Expected uh, level. If your party level is bigger than the expected area, uh, sorry, expected level, then a void will work. If party is equal to or less than expected, then a void will not work. What does a void do? A void completely suppresses encounters. So as you can see, the encounter is not ticking up at all. And that's because I have a void on. This is one of the few parts of the game where a void actually is used. Um, in fact, I think it's the only part of this game where a void's used. Um, and it's the only time in the game where we're actually over leveled. So that's nice. Um, so as long as we, um, uh, keep a void up in this bit, we don't have to worry about anything, so that's kind of nice. So more runner's choice stuff coming up here. Uh, you can use a void here or in Kalima Forest. If you use it in Kalima Forest, uh, a void will wear off just before Kalima Forest and it'll give you an extra text box. So I like to do it here uh, so that we don't get that extra text box. The thing about using a void or an overworld synergy is that it actually takes about half a second longer to do it in the overworld than it does in a dungeon. So anytime where you can do it in a dungeon as opposed to the overworld, you should do that. So for instance, even if a void wears out um, about here is where it would normally wear out, don't refresh a void until you get into Kalima Forest, otherwise you're basically wasting half a second for no reason. Again, at this point, we don't have too much to worry about because uh, there's no encounters. Uh, an encounter should stay completely suppressed until uh, threat. Of course, if you happened to have somebody die or happen to be underleveled, uh, it is entirely possible that you're getting encounters in this area and the encounters here aren't very dangerous. Um, a void will eventually stop working in treachery, um, 
and in Trick Tree the strategy is just run. That would be the strategy here as well, just run away from the encounters if you, instead of fighting them because there's uh, very little benefit to doing that. Solving these puzzles, no big deal. Uh, the only thing I'll draw attention to in this puzzle is that you don't need to push this down first or need to push this down first or anything like that. What you should do is you should put this guy, push this one up from this position and then this one down. But it just optimizes your movement ever, ever so slightly. Void probably wears out very soon. Wears out in here, yeah, right? This room here is a puzzle room. Notice how I'm not getting encounters, even though a void wore off. Uh, you don't get encounters in this room, so don't feel pressured to put a void back on until just about until just before you're about to leave the room, or even you can risk it, go to trit if you like. Um, a void stops working after the first room in trit on uh, usually, so um, it's kind of up to you whether you want to use a void or not. So to solve this puzzle, the easiest way to do it is to come up to the right hand side here, push this across. This actually has opened up a path for us, and now going down is going to be the fastest way to get back. So the fact that you move the log and that opens up a new pathway is actually kind of convenient for this, so that's great. We can flip the switch back on, big deal. And just before I leave this room, I'm going to cast a void. Mostly so that I'm going to minimize the encounter in Trit, more so than the encounter in Kalima. Um, I, I don't... It, it's highly unlikely that you get an encounter in this stretch of the, the dungeon. Um, but I'm minimizing the encounter for, for Trit by putting on a Void at that point. So notice how I'm not generating any encounter here, so this is fine, but I will start to generate encounter in this room. Again, nothing has changed except that the average level expected for the area has gone up a little bit, and now I'm below that threshold, so that's fine. That just helps minimize the encounters and threats, so that's kind of good. As I mentioned before, um, yeah, it works outside too, that's interesting. This whole dungeon is very strange when it comes to encounters, it's, uh, yeah, just very odd, very, very odd. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we basically are just going to run away from everything. We're not really concerned by any of these encounters. They're, they'll just do what they do, and we're not we're not concerned at all. We're just going to keep running until it works. Around we go. I'm actually curious if a void's going to work outside now. It doesn't. Good. I, I thought I was crazy for a moment. That's totally fine. That's what we expect. All right. Running away, running away. Breeze. Okay, so Breeze is one of the first potential sources of significant time loss that isn't associated to a death. So Sleet can run away, but that's not too much of a time loss. You just out and in. But here, Breeze running away is a bit of a time loss because you have to run back to Tret, reset the uh, run back, uh, run to the left into Tret and then come back out to the exterior and go get Breeze. So that can incur an extra encounter and it's just a bit of a pain. What we're going to do is first of all we're going to heal up with Isaac. Try to do it with Isaac so that his PP is as, uh, the least possible. Stand by everything, set Gust. The idea here is that we want to outspeed this Jin and kill him before he can get an action off. Unfortunately, uh, it's generally RNG whether Isaac's going to outspeed Breeze, but hopefully uh, we're in a good place. We, we won't know. Caught by surprise, that's a good start. We're not overly concerned about this because uh, Breeze isn't strong enough to really kill anybody, but it can still be a pain if that was caught by surprise into Flea, for instance. I see that Isaac has 42 agility, uh, so this is going to be completely fine. We're going to outspeed just fine, so that's good. So, the strategy, pretty straightforward. We're going to have Isaac, Ivan, and Mia summon rush, and that way Breeze isn't going to get an action. So we're going to do Ramses with Isaac, surprise, surprise. We're going to use Kirin with Ivan, and Nereid with Mia. Trying to use the mono ele the elemental of the, 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 the adept to get extra damage off, um, but we don't always be doing that, at least at this point we are. And Ramses will finish him off. Bang. It's a pretty nice kill actually, you have just enough buffer that the uh, RNG on the damage doesn't really impact anything, so that's kind of cool. And we continue on our way. 
jump down here. And almost at tripped. These vines are another great candidate for the instant climb, by the way, so if you want to challenge yourself, go for it. Oh, this is gonna be gross. Uh, you can either go up or down. I believe down is slightly faster, so I'm gonna go down. So the only other thing you need to keep in mind is that there are no encounters in Tret's room. So once we enter Tret's room, we can safely do whatever we like, which is kind of nice. I'm gonna run right up to Tret without triggering the fight, so I'm gonna end up here and not trigger the fight. I'm gonna do my menu now, so first of all I'm gonna heal off all my damage. I'm going to set retreat. Also going to use a void. It's actually really important that we use a void at this instance because that's going to avoid getting encounters after trip. So a void persists through battle. So even though I have an encounter with a void up, once I defeat trip, a void will still be in play. Then I'm going to eventually backtrack through the overworld, and then I'm not going to get any encounters to clear my bridge, which is going to be really helpful. So yes, we're going to use a void, and that's going to be helpful later on. Now I'm going to do the menu for trip. Uh, basically, the idea with Tret is uh, pretty straightforward, it's, it's uh, not too scary at all. I actually want to get uh, Fever and Sleet onto Isaac, um, but we're going to do it in a kind of an interesting way. I'm going to do this, going to do this, going to do this. This is my setup for Tret. This menu here, where I've kind of put granite on Ivan and kind of jumbled these chin up, this is an optimization that I've recently started to be started doing that basically is going to minimize the amount of menuing that we're going to need to do throughout the whole run. The only thing that's important for this fight is that Flint and Fever are set on Isaac and everything else doesn't matter. But everything else here has been configured in such a way that it's going to be uh, result in the least menuing going forward. So just keep that in mind as we're going through these things. If you happen to have been lucky enough to get an oil drop, there is a faster tret strat. That tret strat is noted in the notes. Uh, it basically means that uh, you can two turn tret instead of three turn them. Um, so if you have an oil drop, that's great. It's not worth grinding for an oil drop because it doesn't save that much time. But just by chance, if you happen to have received an oil drop, stick that bad boy on Mia and there's a really quick kill that uh, you can use. Again, it's in the notes, so uh, go consult that. We're going to stick to the general strategy, assuming we haven't got an oil drop, which, for my luck, I never get oil drops, but everybody else seems to, so anyway. Let's jump into the trip fight then. Alrighty, trip fight. Exciting, exciting. Um, the only thing we need to know here is that trip isn't very dangerous. The only way this fight can go wrong is if he targets Ivan with Briar a bunch of times, and secondly, if Sleep Star connects with a bunch of people. In either of those situations, things can go wrong, otherwise things will probably be okay. The strategy is pretty simple. Uh, we want to get off a bunch of high damage synergy abilities and then finish them off with summons. We don't do summons, then synergy, only because we want to minimize the number of gin recoveries in the fight to optimize the fight time and minimize the number of uh, summon animations as, as we can. So the way this works is we basically are going to use Flint with Isaac, not Fever. Notice how if I use Fever, we lose about like 12 points of damage on the attack stat. So we use Flint first, then Fever, that's going to give us more damage overall. So Flint, Flare Wall, because that's Garrett's most damaging ability and it's really fast. Plasma, and we're actually going to defend with Mia, because Mia isn't actually that useful in this fight. If you had an Oil Drop, this is where Mia would be using that Oil Drop. Let's see what Tret's going to do. Sleep Star, fantastic. And Isaac fell asleep. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play out that scenario later on, um, but we'll go through the conventional strat right now. Next, Fever, Flare Wall again, Atlanta, and Kirin with Mia. Uh, Kirin would be stronger on Garrett, but Mia doesn't have a damaging ability, um, so having her use Kirin is going to optimize for the uh, optimize things basically. Make it the, it's the most efficient way to deal the most amount of damage. Uh, because between Flare Wall and Kirin, you're going to do more damage than, say, Kirin on Garrett and anything else with Mia. So it still works out to be the strong strategy. 
again. Dude, come on. I'm trying to do a tutorial here. There we go. <laughs> this guy is not letting me teach you guys things. And finally, the last turn, I'm just going to use Ramses. Attack and attack. Uh, plasma with Ivan. Attack with Mia for security. Hopefully, this kills. And it, it, it exactly kills. So you can see here there might be a little bit of uh, RNG involved that may result in no kill, in which case Mia's attack will secure it. Easy. Okay, so that's the trip fight when it goes well. When it doesn't go well, this thing happens. So this is from that first turn where he used Sleep Star and Isaac fell asleep. So the issue with Isaac falling asleep is obviously I don't have access to Fever. So I'm still going to persist with the same basic strategy. I'm going to use Flare Wall with Garrett. I'm going to use Atlanta with Ivan. I'm going to use... Um, Nothing with Mia. I'm actually going to defend with Mia because she's got nothing to do in this fight, actually. Well, nothing to do it from this position. Actually, she's got an elixir, so I can actually use this elixir on uh, Isaac. I totally forgot about that. We never use elixirs, so it's one of those things that uh, never crosses your mind. If I if the two people who were, were asleep, then maybe I'd be doing things differently. But at least in this instance. Uh, this is this makes the most sense. So now I'm gonna use Fever. I need to use Kirin. I can use Kirin with, with Garrett. That's gonna be my kill. I can use Plasma here. And now I need Mia to summon Ramses because Isaac needs to set up Fever. So as you can see, this fight's not too dangerous. As long as we get off about five synergy abilities and all of um, our three summons, this will probably kill. Not a problem. Probably kill. It didn't kill. We got unlucky. You know, if we have enough people who go fast up uh, first to, to avoid all that problem. So that's Tret. So like I said, the only issues are with Briar and Sleepwell. Adapt accordingly. If you have to heal, heal. If you have to um, use the elixir, use the elixir. If um, too many people are, are, are slipped, well, just hang in there and, and try and tough it out like unfortunately there's not a lot we can do on that but Tret is sufficiently not dangerous that it shouldn't be an issue to still complete the fight so just keep that in mind truck through it try to keep putting damage into Tret, and eventually he should go down All right, we have one little bit left to do in this this part of the speed run and that is we're going to go through to zephyr come down here in the forest again instead of talking to Tret with a we're going to just open the menu with select, and then use the Hermes water. Great, okay. So, there's a few things here that we should be aware of. So first of all, ideally at this point we can retreat out and proceed to, to Bilibin, uh, to, to Kalima Bridge with no problem. Sometimes, however, I do have the saved, right? We don't have enough PP, so I've got 5 PP here. Oh no, I can't cast retreat. Rather than run around and try to generate an uh, extra tick of uh, recovery, it's just better to just climb in. Go into retreat mode, climb in, and you'll end up back at the entrance. So that's a handy little trick, uh, just in case your PP management was a little bit off in the run. In any case, I have retreat, so I'm just going to retreat out. That is slightly faster than uh, um, walking back into trip, but this is fine. Alright, notice how the encounter isn't ticking up. Again, that's because we had a Void on, so that's kind of helpful. Uh, it allows us to recover gen and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, so we'll just keep progressing around here. And the bridge. Alright, so now we're in this part. I'm gonna stand by all gen, gonna heal up with Isaac. We do want to tank Isaac's PP, we want that to be as low as possible. And we're just going to proceed through. If you have a lot of PP here, let's say you've got like 20 PP with Isaac. What you should do is set all your gen here and use synergy with everybody. So here you can be using Blast, here you can be using Plasma, here you can be using whatever uh, Ivan has. I believe he's got Plasma as well. So Blast, Plasma, Plasma will clear all of the enemies here. Um, and will allow, us to, allow you to drain PP in a world where you still need to drain PP. Uh, what are we going to do here? Oh, and I didn't do things on Mia. That's fine. I probably you should be setting at least one Jupiter on Mia for speed, but this is fine. Not too big of a deal. And it's a Fushion Temple. 
These staircases suck. Make sure you do not get that synergy stone because we don't need it. Make sure you use mind read. Again, using the um, select trick to get through that quickly. I should point out that there is another de another decision you can make here. Um, no one currently is getting the unicorn ring, but it is a thing. The unicorn ring exists in here. What the unicorn ring does is that it cures poison. So potentially on say fusion dragon where you have deadly poison on a bunch of people, unicorn ring can be used to purge that poison um, with a small chance to break. Uh, as I said, no one is currently picking up the unicorn ring and that is because we don't think it, uh, it's difficult to work the unicorn ring into the courthouse strategies. But if you want added security, you can get that unicorn ring. Uh, we're not going to get it though because it's uh, pretty fringe and whether that's actually useful or not. Now that we've talked to N uh, Nyampa, we can jump in here. And this area here is largely the same as before, Hope uh, as the overworld that is, sorry. Um, if you get skeletons, like the base skeleton, you can run away from them. If you get bone fighters, don't run away from them. Those are the blue skeletons. We have to fight those those guys. Uh, generally, we don't get an encounter. Uh, I'm not going to get an encounter this time, so that's quite nice. And here we go, we get into this room. So, at this point, Fushin Temple is basically done. Um, before you take a step, what you want to do is you want to lower your PP to be 5, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to set Fever, I'm going to use Growth, I'm going to use Move. Setting Fever here is actually really convenient. We're going to need Fever to beat uh, uh, Zephyr, uh, so setting Fever here is no problem at all. We should also, at this point, put Nia into Slot 1. Slot 1 basically being the first party position. The reason why we put Nia into slot 1 is A, now Isaac and Garrett are the most tanky members of the party, so we want our tankiest members in the center. The second reason why we want to do this is um, it's going to be more convenient for the Jin layout as we progress through the game. Jin are going to fall roughly in the right places with this, with, uh, this setup in mind. Okay, with Nia in slot 1, with PP now 5, we can go into retreat mode. With retreat mode on, uh, we can run across here. Running across this bridge here actually has nothing to do with being in retreat mode. This bridge always exists, it's just not visible to anybody because you can't see it. Um, so the whole gimmick of this dungeon is you go around, you turn on the light, you're like, aha, there's a path all along. Um, turns out the path was, was there all along, just as the game suggests. So uh, you can always run across this thing here. And as, once we walk through the door, we walk to this room. This room here is where Zephyr is, so that is very, very, very convenient. Solve this quick puzzle, and here. So, as I mentioned before, Breeze was a jerk if he could run away, that would be really bad. Zephyr is even more of a jerk. Two reasons. First reason, Stormray can kill people. If Stormray targets Ivan, Ivan dies, so that sucks. Second of all, if Zephyr runs away, we have to reset the room, and the way we reset the room is you have to take this thing all the way across the room, exit enter, and then come back all the way down. Like, it's really, really not pleasant to, to have to do that. Anyway, from this position, note I actually haven't moved over to here, I'm actually still on the log. If you just face up and press A, you can fight Zephyr, so that's kind of convenient. To beat Zephyr, we basically summon rush him with one caveat. We're using Fever with Isaac instead of Isa Ivan using Atlanta. So, how does that look like? We use Nereid, we use Fever, we use Karen, and we use Ramses with Ivan. This gives us just enough damage to kill uh, this gin. Great, use the plasma, that's totally fine. But yeah, Zephyr's a real jerk. Uh, if you go for the four summon rush strategy, which is basically uh, everybody summons the tier two summon of their respective element, um, you will do potentially one less damage than is required to kill Zephyr. And that's a real pain because then Zephyr gets another action. So it's just better for you to uh, do the, the fever strategy because then you're guaranteed to kill. Fantastic, we've got Zephyr. Zephyr is on Mia. All of these Jin here need to recover, which is kind of a pain, um, but that's fine. We'll deal with that in the next video, so we'll just navigate over to Mogul Forest. We're done here now, we don't need the Orb of Force, there's nothing else we need to do here. 
we can just simply leave Fushin Temple and head on over to Mogul Forest. It would be a good idea to recover a gin before entering, uh, but that's kind of optional. Alright, so now we're in Mogul Forest, we have one gin recovery, and we're going to pick up from here on the next time. As always, if you found this useful, let me know in the comments. If you have feedback, let me know. We can always redo videos if we have to. Um, but this part of the game, particularly uh, from uh, post Sardaros to this point, isn't too difficult. The only real issue here is Zephyr and, well, Zephyr can waste a lot of time. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one where we're going to go through Mogul Forest and probably look at Xi'an a little bit as well. Alright, see ya.